Mark here, and I wanted to show you the Spyglass prototypes that I got in a couple weeks ago. Uh, they turned out pretty good. Uh, you can see they have that good rainbow color on the rings. Uh, this one's seen some play, so it's got some dings in it. And the, uh, the cup, uh, and here's the diffraction that inspired the cup design for this. And here's the contact, which inspired the profile shape. This is the Luz Lizardo colorway. Very nice. All right, so let's open this up and take a look at it from the inside. So here it is. You can see that very, very big schmoove ring. Uh, one of the things I noticed immediately uh, when I saw the first uh, machine shop photos, this is the the square bottom of this ring was much more jarring uh, in real life compared to in the CAD files. So that's something I'm probably going to uh, follow up on uh, for a final revision. Uh, the ring placement worked out really well. No issues there. And the assembled yo-yo uh, feels really good in the hand too. No problems with the response. Uh, this pad is a little bit proud of the, the moat, but that's fine. Makes it nice and snappy. The bearings are not uh, loose enough to remove by hand, but they're very easy to remove with a tool, which is good. Uh, that also means they're easy to put back on and reassemble. It's always important, sometimes un underappreciated. All right. So the main area that kind of fell flat for me was actually this finger spin cup. And uh, you'll notice uh, when comparing it to the diffraction, the biggest difference is this outer ring is very, very broad. And also this middle ring is a little bit wider than on the original. So what happens is when you finger spin on this, uh, it'll tend to get stuck in this outer section. And on the diffraction, because it was a very small step, the finger would tend to slip down and down until it got into the middle, which was very good. Uh, on the supply glass, it's still possible to get your finger in there, but you have to uh, push it there by yourself using uh, another finger or by just getting lucky and landing it in the middle. And these, uh, the center groove is a little bit too shallow to make it easy to land in there without it bouncing out, out to these other two rims, rings. Uh, and to go along with that, when you're in this outer ring, uh, you can see uh, the shape here is almost perfect to have maximum contact with most of my fingertip along this outer edge, uh, which means if you get stuck out there, uh, the spin time is going to drag very, very slow, very quickly. And I actually have an idea to address that, which is to add a little uh, le lip or ledge here. Uh, and that will keep the finger just a little bit farther away from the outside. And I'm also going to work on some changes to keep this whole finger spin area just a little bit more reasonable for landing a finger spin. So we'll see that when we uh, go back to the CAD file. Uh, but other than that, I'm really, really happy with it. You can still land really good finger spins on it. It's just more work than I was hoping. Uh, I also wanted to compare it to uh, some of the features of the contact. So the, the hub of the contact was actually also inspired by the diffraction. Uh, it just has a uh, that bulbous shape to allow the total weight of it to go down. There's actually like a very minimal amount of center and mid weight on this yo-yo, uh, despite appearances. That allows uh, most of it to go out onto this like big soft ring uh, rim on the outside. It feels light because of the high diameter. Now, the Spyglass, it has a smaller diameter. Uh, it's 53 compared to uh, the almost 57 of the contact. And uh, also compared to the solid uh, 
I'm keeping it level at the bottom there so you can see the that fits actually very nicely inside the little, the little the little ledge on the diffraction. So 53 versus 56. Uh, and it is about 44 wide versus the 46 of the diffraction. Let's actually uh, weigh and measure these. The spyglass, uh, 63.84. Uh, this one is 63.47. It's perfectly fine to have that sort of tolerance. And let's look at the dimensions. 52.97, that's like right on, right on target. And the width is 43.89, about a tenth of a millimeter under. That's fine. Feels good. It feels good. It's nice and compact. Yeah, let's just take a, another closer look at them here. The rainbow rings turned out really nice on this. I think having a very broad uh, outer facing ring like this was a, a good idea to show off the uh, one of the best parts of uh, bimetal actually is being able to make this colorway. It's very good. All right, thanks for taking a look with me. All right, there, I got, I got it in the inner circle and locked. Hi, we're back here in the CAD file, and this is the prototype drawing of the spyglass. So I wanted to talk about some of the changes uh, and show what those might look like uh, to make this yo-yo just a little bit better. Uh, so here you can see that very broad like outside area uh, where the finger is uh, getting stuck during finger spins. And let me actually uh, show you what that looks like in CAD style. So let me draw a uh, circle that's like the same uh, diameter as a finger. I measured one of my fingers earlier. It's about 14 millimeters in diameter. It looks really big uh, against this drawing. Of course, yo-yos are small, so that makes sense. But you can see uh, this blue circle being a finger, for example. And uh, when you land on this outside ring, it's it's very solidly on this flat part. Now, let me show you what that looks like instead on the, the diffraction. Oops, there we go. Let me draw a finger here. Whoops, I made it, I made it twice as big as it should be. It should be seven. There you go. All right, we'll turn those off. So on the diffraction, you can see that the, uh, this angled part of the cup, uh, where the inverse round shape is, is kind of pushes the finger away from the rim. So it's not gonna drag there. And also, once you end up here, the finger's very close to sliding down to the next layer, very close to sliding down to the next layer until you're in this middle area. And then it works super well from there. Uh, so uh, on the spyglass, because the, the shape of the yo-yo is different, there's a, a much larger uh, area inside the cup that we need to design around. So how can we fix that? I, I went ahead and drew up a couple options that I can show you. So in, in this one, here's a, another finger that's already in here. Uh, the I 
I added a couple things. Uh, one, here's the overhang uh, for like a, an inner grind area. And that would theoretically uh, prevent the finger from rubbing against the entire rim. Uh, and I've angled uh, this part of the cup right here to kind of guide the finger closer down to these steps. And here's what that looks like. It looks very similar uh, to the prototype. Uh, the, the inside area is actually smaller uh, in the hopes that this this middle section would actually be a viable target for trying to land a finger spin uh, by having this shelf be smaller and it'd be more likely for the finger to drop down. And here is a different version. Uh, so this one instead adds uh, an, another ring. It still has the, the overhang here for the, the thumb grind lip, uh, but this adds another ring uh, to the cup to help shoot the finger down. So those are those are two things, uh, two directions that we could take it. I'm I'm not sure I need anything as extreme as either of those. Uh, but having having worked through these already, I think I I I don't actually like the triple step uh, version that much. Uh, I have that saved if I need it. Uh, however, there are a couple uh, small changes I can make inside the cup anyways to make it sort of do this whole thing a little bit better. Uh, one of the big ones actually is to make these shelves just a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna increase them by 10%, make them 1.1 millimeters. And let's see, and I do want to add a, a thumb grind lip here. So I'm going to remove that constraint. And have this go down here. and connect up there. Now give this a big radius. So it has a nice and smooth overhang. There we go. Now we can set how big we want this to be. Just reorganize that a little bit. All right, uh, and this schmoove ring, I wanted, I wanted this to be a much rounder sort of deal. So what I'm actually going to do is connect these two with a circular arc. this. And increase the radius of that. I'm gonna make this symmetric. Didn't like that at all. All right, I'll 
just put that there. And I need to add a point here so I can constrain the distance between uh, the smooth ring and this. Uh, let's see. Can leave it as a reference for now. There we go. I feel like this is a part that needs to be relatively strong. There, let's let's try that and see how it looks. So this is a uh, very aesthetic. Uh, decision. All right, that'll be much smoother looking. And let's we'll see how we're doing on weight. Okay, so these changes added two grams to the area. Yeah. And what that means actually is that the size of the steel rings needs to go down. All right, that almost did it. There's a constraint here. I can just edit that from this page. 64.30. That's not bad. So it would be a little bit uh, heavier. Let me, let me see if there's somewhere else that I can save weight. All right, I can do can make that inner circle just a little bit bigger, closer to the diffraction. And that only removes uh, 0.1 grams. I think most of the aluminum weight is around this part. I can remove part of that. There we go, 63.98. That's, that's where we wanna be. Right, it's just a little bit heavier than the the prototype, but a little bit less room weight at the same time. So I had to support the finger spinning just a little bit better. There we go. We'll see how that goes.